Hey everyone, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. My name is Tiffany and today we are doing part two in my rabbit breeding slash giving birth slash raising the baby bunnies series. Part one covered breeding and uh, all that entails with that. So today uh, is day 28 for my does and so day 28 is nest box day. So day one is obviously breeding. That's the day you breed your doe. You need to mark it in your calendar and 15 days after you breed your doe you can palpate her. To be totally honest with you guys I have never been able to properly palpate a doe. Um, I've never been able to feel babies in the doe uh, but I can definitely tell around day 15 to 20 that her stomach is feeling tighter. At least that's my experience. Don't ever press too hard uh, when you're feeling for any differences or anything like that. When I breed my does, I actually, uh, after around day 15, I will not handle them. Um, I don't like getting them out of their cage. I don't like picking them up. I really don't like to just, I don't like to handle them after they're bred. Um, baby bunnies inside the mama can be very fragile, so I like to leave her alone and just kind of um, let her grow them without any disturbance. Typically around the two to three week mark after breeding, you can start to tell a difference in either the doe's personality or her eating habits. Like for instance, Chai here in the second cage over uh, has almost completely gone off feed, but she will eat a ton of hay. Uh, she just doesn't want her pellets right now. And that is actually a very normal thing uh, for does not to want to eat. And sometimes I had a doe before this that actually liked to eat a ton when she was pregnant. So it really depends on the specific doe, but uh, eating habits changing is definitely normal. So don't worry too much if your doe's eating habits change, uh, but I always say to make sure to keep an unlimited amount of hay in the doe's cage because even if she's not eating her pellets, at least she's being able to graze and she has that hay to kind of munch on. You don't want GI stasis, which is when they completely stop eating 100%. That is not a good thing so at least that she has hay uh, she's gonna keep having something move through her system so like I said today is nest box day day 27 to 28 after breeding is the day that you want to put your nest box in this is what my nest boxes look like they are made with plywood and then the bottom is a fourth inch by fourth inch hardware cloth we have used half inch by half inch we have done solid bottoms um, I find that a fourth by a fourth is the best uh, option because it helps keep bedding in but allows urine to fall out. I have a loud chicken over there right now. <laughs> so a fourth by a fourth is probably the best option in my opinion and if you're wondering what the dimensions of my nest box is I am going to link a blog post that goes along with this video so you guys have uh, those dimensions to work with. I also include the lip on my nest boxes. I didn't do this at first. But I find that the lip really helps when the rabbit, the mama rabbit goes in to nurse and she jumps out. This lip helps so uh, it scrapes the babies off so you don't have to worry about her accidentally dragging a baby out. And uh, yeah, it just works as like a little baby scraper. <laughs> so that is why that's there. And uh, the top here, the doe likes to sit up there, especially when the babies get a little bit older. She will sit up here a lot because they start to become little leeches and she's going to want to sit up here uh, to get away from them. So I will put the dimensions for my nest box in the blog post. And of course, around the time that my does are supposed to give birth, we are also supposed to get a snowstorm. Since it is winter and my nest boxes have wire bottom, uh, the wire bottom works really really well in the summer especially to keep the babies kind of cooler but in the winter it can kind of sometimes work against you um, you want that urine to be able to get out of the nest box but since it is going to be in the teens here and possibly in the single digits in the next couple of days i am going to line mine with cardboard and you just want plain cardboard like this your doe might mess with it she might not um, hopefully she doesn't, but you can put this in the bottom of your nest box and it just um, adds insulation so the cold air can't come up and kind of chill the babies. Um, so that is what I'm going to do with my nest boxes. So I'm going to show you guys how I initially like to set my nest boxes up. So in the summer I wouldn't do this, but since it's winter out and it's going to be quite cold, I'm going to put cardboard in the bottom. 
and that just will make sure that no cold air can come up. And um, if you do need to change this out later on, you can remove the babies and remove the cardboard and, and replace it with clean cardboard. Then the next thing I like to use is kiln dried pine shavings. I had someone on one of my videos say that pine shavings weren't safe for rabbits. As long as pine shavings are kiln dried, they are perfectly safe for rabbits, so don't worry about that. It is cedar that you want to avoid. Cedar has oils that can uh, kind of leak out and upset a rabbit's respiratory system, so don't use cedar, but pine shavings are perfectly fine. So it's winter. I am just going to give them a big old layer of pine shavings, and I bet you anything that when I give the does these nest boxes, they're probably gonna dig a lot of it out, but they're gonna kind of make it their own. So just let them do their thing. I'm just gonna put a ton of stuff in here. I think that's about two or three inches of pine shavings in the bottom. Now I am going to add some hay in there and with the hay, they will carry that around. They'll probably take it out, put it back in, just kind of make it however they want to make it. So there's some hay. So there we go, stuff to the brim, but they are going to shuffle this around and do whatever. I'm gonna get the other one ready and then we'll put them in and see how the does like them. So there's one more thing that I want to talk about today as Solstice is very loudly digging in her new nest box. A lot of people I see online, uh, videos and photos and stuff like that, they just, they are trying to help their rabbit as the rabbit is trying to give birth. I want to encourage you guys to try and leave them alone as much as possible. And I know it can be hard, especially when it's your very first litter of rabbits. Um, it can be very difficult to just like leave them alone. Um, but the thing about rabbits is that they are prey animals. They're not like cats and dogs uh, who don't really mind our presence when they do give birth. Rabbits don't actually like uh, to be disturbed. Rabbits, no matter how uh, well handled they are, they can be very uh, skittish during this time. So it's the best thing that you can do to just kind of leave them alone to figure it out. Don't change anything in their routine or cages or anything like that. Just uh, keep it very low stress. As we continue on, I will probably show you guys a lot of footage on day 30 because day 30 is when we see a lot of nesting behavior um, and fur pulling usually. Sometimes rabbits wait until the very last minute. It stresses me out so much, but they'll wait till the very last minute to pull any fur. Um, so we will try to capture that as much as we can. I think Solstice will probably pull fur. Solstice seems like she is very, very ready to have her babies. She's just like her mama Holly. I think that she's gonna be a really, really good mother, so. Chai is also, I think, going to be a really good mother. She's just so much more shy than Solstice, but I think that she's going to do really good as well. Both of them are looking very large, so I'm excited. Um, and I'm wondering how many we're going to have, hopefully a lot, but not too many. You don't want too many. Anyway, I will see you guys on day 30.
snowstorm. This does not even begin to cover what happened here over the last couple of days. I'm pretty sure in some areas we've gotten over a foot of snow. It is just crazy. So much snow. Of course it happens right before my does are due. It's just how it goes, guys. Now I know I said to you guys that you want to leave your does alone, and you do. This is fine, they're used to my voice, they're used to me coming out here and talking to them and filming, so I'm not concerned that this is going to stress them out in any way. Hello. She just grabbed a hold of my coat. <laughs> One thing that you absolutely do not want to do, especially in the last day of pregnancy, is pick your doe up and really handle her. That's not a good thing. That's a good way to injure the babies for one, and it's a good way to just stress her out and make her not feel comfortable. Um, so you definitely just don't want to handle them, and I know I've said that over and over again, but it's just, it's the truth. So, uh, but just sitting out here talking to them, they're very used to that, so. Hello, pretty lady. Solstice has pretty much stopped nesting. She like kind of took off full force on the day that I was showing you guys the nest boxes, and she has made a full-blown fur nest. And I really want to show it to you guys, but I also don't want to take it out of her cage. So I think I'm gonna try to like squeeze the camera in there and like kind of show you guys like into the nest box. Cause what she has done is actually very, very good. Uh, she has pulled so much hair already. I don't even know if she's gonna need to pull anymore. If she does, that's great because it is cold outside. So over the last day, Chai has gathered up every last scrap of hay in her cage and put it in her nest box. So I'm very encouraged to see that because I was wondering if she was actually pregnant. She is starting to eat more, so I can say that with confidence. I was hoping to catch some hay stashing behavior from either of these guys. I mean, I know that you saw a lot of nesting behavior from Solstice the day that I put the nest box in, um, but I was hoping that I would get some hay stashing to show you guys. I only saw Chai do it last night um, and I didn't have my cell phone out here. I don't actually think that Chai is going to put any more hay in her nest box. It is like stuffed to the brim. So uh, the main thing that we have to worry about with Chai now is that she pulls hair and instinct kind of kicks in. I'm encouraged that she's already um, put a bunch of hay in the nest box. So. We just gotta keep our fingers crossed. And tomorrow is day 31. Most of the time what you can expect is uh, the night between the 30th and the 31st day is when they'll usually have their babies. More often with the bigger breeds like this, I've had them go to day 32. So if they don't have them tomorrow, it'll probably be day 32. Um, sometimes even 33 or 34. It really just depends on the specific doe. I like to make records for each one of them to see how long they all go. But for the most part, that is all that we can do for now. And now we just kind of wait for the babies to arrive. So uh, other than that, you don't need to help your doe with anything. You just kind of let her have the babies and uh, just keep checking the nest box every day. So we will come back out here once the babies are born and I am excited to show you guys that. Hopefully it all goes well. You never know with rabbits, um, but you just, you gotta hope for the best, keep your fingers crossed, and hopefully we have two healthy litters on the way. Both of my does have given birth. 
They gave birth yesterday. Yesterday was day 31 and we did check them over really quick, but for YouTube we wanted to make sure that they were going to be okay. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't catch any of the footage of them actually giving birth. It's actually really hard to catch a rabbit giving birth because they're very private about it. Uh, both of my does decided to give birth in the middle of the day, so that's interesting. <laughs> So Chai here had eight. She had two blues, two chocolates, and four blacks. And Solstice over here had six. She had four blacks and two blues, which was a surprise to me, actually. So I wanted to give you guys a couple of pointers on the day that your doe is going to give birth. First of all, I know I've already mentioned this before, but you want to leave your mama alone. Hovering around her cage while she's trying to give birth or, you know, trying to pet her or anything like that while she's giving birth can do more harm than good. And so you just kind of want to let her do her thing uh, so she doesn't stress out and doesn't um, abandon them or anything like that. I also wanted to touch on the myth about touching baby bunnies. Yes, it is a myth that if you touch baby bunnies, the mama will abandon them. This is actually not true at all. It's not even true for wild rabbits. So if you ever touch baby bunnies in the wild, uh, don't feel like you have to all of a sudden take them in and rescue them. The mama will come back to them. It's a total myth that human smell makes them stop caring for their young. So don't worry about that. You can actually handle baby bunnies pretty quickly quickly after the mama rabbit gives birth and you want to in fact because you need to get in there at least once a day preferably twice within the first week or so just to make sure that nobody has died especially in cold weather like this if you have a baby die in the litter it can turn into like a little ice cube and it can chill the rest of the litter which is something that you just don't want so like I said uh, you can handle the baby bunnies pretty much as soon as she's done giving birth you want to let her clean up and stuff it takes about I don't know, half an hour to an hour, but as long as the mama is just kind of relaxing in her cage and she's had her babies, you can get the nest box out and you can check them all over. Some does, like Solstice I'm finding, is uh, very protective of her babies, so just be mindful of that and uh, don't, don't have them out for too long, especially in the first couple of weeks. They are baby bunnies, they need to stay warm, they need to stay together, so that being said, you can handle them one to two times a day for short periods of time just to make sure that they're all doing okay and that they're all being fed. I always say that once your mama rabbit gives birth, give her a high value treat. She has earned it. I like to give my rabbits lettuce and parsley and kale sometimes when I have kale. I gave mine carrots yesterday. I know carrots are a little sugary. You should not give your rabbits a whole bunch of carrots, but they did give birth, so I was like, why not? There are a couple of reasons why I said you should breed two does at once in the first part of the series. One of them being that you can use the two does to foster if you have a litter that's too big or if you have a litter that's too small. Just keep in mind that with fostering, you should really only do it if you have to, if you're worried about litter size or the mama taking care of them or something like that. Other than that, I like to have mamas raise their own babies. Now I know that I'm going to get some people on this video that don't know any better and they're going to ask me why I'm not using any supplemental heat. And I will tell you, you don't want to use heat lamps with baby bunnies because you can actually cook them. And I know that sounds absolutely awful and it is, but it does happen, unfortunately. Baby bunnies just don't need that supplemental heat. Another reason not to use a heat lamp is that it's a fire hazard. So uh, you don't want to overheat your babies, you don't want to overheat mama either, and you just don't want that risk risk of a fire hazard and in your rabbitry. So I would just recommend against a heat lamp altogether. They stay plenty warm together. Once I stick my hand in their nests, they're just so warm in there. And so the rabbits themselves, they are cold weather animals. They do get a layer of hay. Uh, when it gets really cold out, we just line these cages with hay. We use a lot of hay around here. We also use cardboard as insulation. So everybody will stay plenty warm as long as you keep them out of the wind and as long as you keep them dry. Well guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I hope it was helpful to you. If I missed anything or if you're wondering about something else, feel free to leave it in the comments below. And also don't forget that I've also written a blog post that accompanies this video. A link is in the description down below. There's one for part one as well. So if you have any more questions, I cover a couple of other things in those blog posts. So uh, feel free to drop a question or a comment on those blog posts. You will see part three 
soon-ish, we are going to go through raising the baby bunnies and we will go over common questions about raising baby bunnies and stuff like that. If you have anything that you want me to add to that video, uh, feel free to comment. So thank you guys so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one. Like no one cares, turn this way.